Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today I have what I'm pretty sure is a premiere on YouTube of a new watch from Damasco. It is the DC86 Chronograph. When I checked, I could not find any reviews of it, so I guess it's kind of like a world premiere. And for the occasion, check it out. Damasco sent me this awesome swag shirt. Uh, this is probably one of the coolest things that any watch company has ever given me. There's not many things that watch companies give out to vendors. People always think, oh, they must give you so much cool stuff. No, they really don't. So uh, the shirt is awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, so today, getting into the DC-86 Chronograph, which was released uh, several months ago. It is a piece of engineering marvel uh, inside and outside. I have one here to show you, obviously. We will get into it. The particular is what makes it amazing, what makes it Damasco. And then from my own wrist check, I, of course, am wearing my DS30 Ocean. So cool. And I'm back to an Islander. Let us check out what the DC-86 is all about. Okay, so here we go. We're getting into the Damasco DC-86 Chronograph. I have for you a uh, matte steel version uh, with orange accents, as you can see. Uh, we'll get into all of it in a minute. Uh, they do make the same model with green accents. They make the same model with no accents or white. And they do it all again in PVD case if you want. Um, I guess we'll go through the particulars and then we'll get into what makes it special. So, first off, it is a 42 millimeter case. If you go to the bezel, the bezel's about 44. The bezel sticks out a little bit. You see those nice aggressive teeth? Um, it's a 42 millimeter case. It's 14 thick to a slightly domed very slight sapphire crystal now you can see that you can see the there you go when i go like that you can see the um the dominus come across it is ar coated on the inside only uh it is 50 millimeters lug tip to lug tip so it's a very comfortable size a little bit large but it is a chronograph there's a lot of information to display it is a 22 millimeter lug it is water resistant to a hundred meters it does have a screw down crown uh and it's got a lot going on for it on the inside. So inside is, you know, before we can get to the inside, um, maybe, maybe we should just discuss a little bit just about the functionality of the watch, what makes it special, and then we'll get into the insides. Um, so I have it running, and it's been running on purpose. So it is a chronograph. It is based on a Valjoux 7750 movement, but with a lot of Damasco enhancements, patented um, ideas, uh, little items and stuff that make it special to what it is. So to someone from this familiar with 70s and 80s watch culture, it looks a lot like, almost like a Le Mania 5100 movement. Uh, Le Mania had the three dials going this way, like a conventional 7750 does. Um, Damasco has moved one subdial over here, but it retains the same subdials, um, elapsed chronograph hours, running seconds, and then a 24-hour meter, which is more of a glorified AM PM indicator. Kind of necessary, though, for the symmetry of the dial. Like I said, the Le Mania 5100, I believe, had this dial, subdial, up here at the top. Um, what makes it special is that it is center seconds, chronograph seconds, but it's also center minutes. So this is an elapsed minute hand, and you start and stop. See that? this top button and i have it running just so you can see all the hands out i'll reset it in a minute but as the chronograph seconds sweeps to 12 you will see it jump to an elapsed time of 12 minutes so recently i did a review on a damasco dc 80 or 82 which is also a center second center minutes chrono but it does not have an elapsed hour counter so in essence, it was a 60-minute 60, 60 chrono, unless you use it in conjunction with some kind of a bezel. Oh, I didn't mention that before. Besides all the color variations, Damasco also does count-up bezels, count-down bezels, and uh, GM, uh, dual-time 12-hour bezels. Um, so it's meant to evoke the 5100, which, again, why do you want uh, center elapsed minutes and center elapsed seconds? Simply because if you look at running seconds, it's so hard to see running seconds, right? You can't really... You, you can't really get down to a, a degree of um, uh, clarity where you can make out the individual seconds. But here, with center seconds, you can 49, 50, 51. And then with elapsed minutes especially, it's very easy to read that this is at 12. Um, contrast that. Now, I did just bring one watch, and I'm not knocking this watch at all. This is an Aristo with a 
stock 7750 movement. You start it, seconds hand roll runs. You have running seconds here as usual, okay? But you have elapsed minutes up here, elapsed hours down here. Elapsed minutes get very difficult to read in a subdial format, um, which is where what Damasco's done with this movement by modifying a 7750. Again, n no easy feat at all to have um, all this stuff running. Uh, they, they make the watch so much easier to read. So uh, this is, the movement is a uh, C51-6, which is again, one of their designations for their chronograph movements. Uh, it is a, so they start with a top grade 7750. So n no base movement here, it's a top grade 7750. They adjust it to five positions. That's not regulated, guys. That's adjusted. So uh, I've covered this in the watch and learn. What's the difference between uh, regulation and adjustment? Regulation is really just doing fast, slow. Adjustment requires a master watchmaker's touch uh, to really finesse the movement to get it to give similar timing in all five or six positions. Not easy to do at all because if you just regulate, you speed it up when it's dial up, you're speeding it up when it's crown up. Um, but with adjustment, adjustment is a different animal altogether. Uh, it is a 27 joule movement and it has roughly a 48 hour power reserve. Um, I'll get to the loom later, but it's uh, X1 green uh, C1 color loom. Uh, let's see. Oh, so I, I guess I should, let me zoom in on the dial a bit. It's beautiful as everything Damasco is. So if I want to stop the chrono, I go like this and then I'm going to reset it. So the hour hand, elapsed hours, elapsed minutes and elapsed seconds will all fire back to their original position. So isn't that cool how elapsed seconds and elapsed minutes are right on top of each other? Makes it so easy to read and that's where the orange accents come in. So, right, so all your orange hands, think about it from this way, all your orange hands are chronograph hands. So if you're timing something, you just look for the orange and that is what you're timing is going to be uh, okay uh, enough talking beautiful bi-directional bezel uh, they use ceramic balls uh, it is 60 click not 120 but man look at that you can see there's no play at all absolutely insane how good their bezels are what makes Damasco special on the outside well, besides looking cool right it looks almost looks titanium ish it's not they are super hard cases. They are all hardened to a Rockwell uh, C uh, 60 on the C scale. Um, being an engineer, I'm all over that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, that's what uh, one of those destructive tests used to find out how hard steel is. You knife guys will certainly know what it is. Uh, so let's let's check out the case back for a bit. We'll start from the outside and work our way in. So stainless steel 60 is whoops 60 on the Rockwell hardness because it is stainless steel. It is nickel free. Uh, shockproof, uh, anti-magnetic to 100 milliteslas, water resistant to 100 meters. Uh, let's see what we got here. So the bezel is also Rockwell hardened to 60 uh, on the C scale. And the inlay, which is, so here's the bezel. This is the inlay, right? The part with the numbers on it. So the inlay is hardened to the same 60 C, but it is then plated something that they have to use a slightly different hardness scale they have to use vickers so it's 2500 on the vickers scale it's not going to scratch couple that with sapphire crystal so sapphire crystal 2500 vickers 60 rockwell hardness on the case this thing will probably never scratch um, unless you really 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 try to do it with a diamond or something uh, ceramic bearings and lubricating elements the ball bearings on the um on the rotor are ceramic um Lots of good stuff. Now, of course, it's made in Germany. There's the Damasco number, and there is the item number, and there is the serial number. They have not made many of these. Um, I only have the one for now. Damasco does offer a whole bunch of straps. Um, this is their standard suede pin buckle strap with a Damasco clasp. Uh, it, they do make a bracelet for this thing. My God, imagine this on a bracelet. It would be a monster, a beautiful monster, but it would be a monster. I did mention the loom. So we have loom everywhere. So it's Super Luminova, X1 grade, green, and um, it is C1, which is more of a whitish kind of paint color. Uh, I guess that now would probably be a good time for us to flip out the light and check it out. So there you go. It glows very well. Um, 
I'm sure this is probably done on purpose, but the chronograph on this version, none of the chronograph hands are loomed, so in the darkness, it's all about reading the time. Easily can see it's 11.30 here. Beautiful. I guess I did not really get into operation much. Uh, you know, most of you probably know these things work, but the screw down crown, Damasco sign, so you have to unscrew it until it pops. You can wind it, again, full 48 hours when it's fully wound. Put out one click. I did not mention that the watch obviously has a a day of the week indicator, there it goes. Pull out two clicks and you can change the time. Okay, let's make it look beautiful, go like that. And of course, as I mentioned, start, stop, reset on the chrono. If you have never handled a mechanical chronograph, it is a decent chunk of, of force to actuate the chronograph because you are moving a lot of springs, cams, levers, uh, all that good stuff, uh, and uh, you're also just getting it set up so you can reset it. Um, so that's why it's a very satisfying click, and you can hear that click coming through. I did not mention price, and that was done on purpose. Uh, the watch is, uh, the way you see it, around 3500 um, bucks, which would make it one of the more expensive watches I sell, uh, Marathon Cesar. Would it be one that's slightly more expensive, but it's got all the tritium glass tubes in it and stuff. Um, and I'm not going to call this watch affordable. It's not, obviously. It's clearly expensive. But I want to make you realize, you know, what you get for the value. And in any other watch brand, a watch brand that actually advertises, um, the watch is worth, yeah, probably at least five times as much. Uh, you get all this kind of scratch proofing, Rockwell hardness, this, this um, whatever they call it, their nitrogen hardening process of all their steels and everything. And the hardening of the inlay so it doesn't scratch the sapphire crystal of course but then on the inside you have this movement that they have basically taken a 7750 and totally retooled it and reconfigured it to have center uh sent chronograph elapsed center minutes move the 24 hour dial down here no easy feat at all this is not simple stuff that they're doing uh this is not you know some brands pop on a custom rotor on a watch this is much more than that this is painstaking watchmaking uh, so let's try it on see how it looks definitely a beauty definitely a watch that i <laughs> could get into uh, so nice like i said they're just so simple and yet not so simple so much about them uh on my six and three quarter interest here you can see i could probably go down to about six and a quarter interest and up to, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, seven, three quarter or so, eight inch wrist. It looks great. 50 on the lug tip to lug tip. What a beautiful watch. Uh, it really is. There's, there's not much bad that I can say about it. So in closing, I will say Damasco's clearly done it again with the DC86. And kind of just bringing watchmaking a little bit higher, uh, elevating things a little bit more, and giving us something that, you know, kind of died with the La Mania 5100 and really has not been around. Uh, so, bravo. Great job. Anyway, uh, this has been Mark from LongIronWatch.com showing you the new Damasco DC86 chronograph. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below, and I will be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.